This is Wraith from Wraith Rain. I'm an author of serialized gay romance fiction. Every week on this podcast, I'll be reading a chapter from one of my gay fantasy shifter serials called Dragon's Rain. I'll explain at the break how you can find out more about this story and others I write. So let's get to it. Chapter 19. Escape. Where are you going, Caden? Tilly's voice rose up behind him. Caden had one leg over the ledge of his window and was about to pivot his body so he could climb down the tree. I think it's pretty apparent where I'm going. Work, he answered testily. One of her eyebrows arched. By way of your window? Something wrong with the door? Yeah, mom and dad are guarding it, he answered her, casting an anxious glance over his shoulder into the hall. If you're coming in, come in. Otherwise, shut the door. Mom and dad might just come up to check on me. She came to the room and shut the door as he asked. He hoped their parents would think he was asleep for another hour at least, which was when he would normally have gotten up to head over to Wally's. So, are you really going to work, or are you going to do some shifter business? She asked a little eagerly and a little shyly. What kind of shifter business would I have? His voice choked a little with laughter. Her hands made their way behind her back, and she began to swing back and forth like she used to when she was a little kid and wanted to ask him something. Like turning into a dragon. He grinned at her. You actually sound excited about me turning into a dragon. Her eyes went huge with excitement. Why wouldn't I be? I want a ride. Uh, A ride? His eyebrows crawled up into his hairline. Of course. I've always wanted to ride a dragon and now I can. You are my own personal dragon mount. She enthused, eyes really shining now. He let out a snort. The spirit, though, rustled its wings and craned his head to look at its back where she would want to sit. The, uh, the spirit is actually considering letting you ride it, he laughed. Really? She leaned towards him on her tiptoes, as if she could somehow see the spirit. Yeah, it's looking at you right now, Till. In fact, it wants to get a little closer, actually. Caden frowned. The spirit wasn't trying to make him shift. Instead, it was leaning out of his chest towards Tilly. His sister suddenly gasped. She was staring at his chest, not his face, and he knew she could see the spirit. Her expression was filled with wonder. Oh, he's beautiful. You know he's a boy? Well, you're a boy, so I suppose he's sort of a boy too. But maybe it's a she. Though mom says that spirits don't have genders. So I guess the spirit's an it, Tilly said, repeating their mother's words, or rather the faith's words about spirits. Suddenly her eyes went wide again. Oh, its name is... Iolair, he finished for her as a name suddenly appeared in his mind. You're the first person Iolair introduced itself to. Well, of course I am. I'm Iolair's sister, too. I guess you are, Till. She reached forward, eyes still on his chest, as if she thought she could touch the spirit. But her hand just landed between his pectoral muscles, and she frowned. Oh, I really thought I could touch Iolair. I want to touch it. And the spirit wanted her to as well. Both of them turned unconsolable expressions upon him, as if Caden were the reason that they couldn't frolic and pet all day. He supposed he was. Yeah, well, we can't exactly do that here. He scrubbed a hand across the back of his neck. No dragons in the house. Too big. What about the yard? Tilly asked. Ah, uh, no. People would see that and know it's me. Park? No. Square? Absolutely not. What part of me hiding on the ninth dragon shifter are you not understanding? He poked her stomach. She let out a squeal of laughter that had him looking at the closed door, but he heard no sound of footsteps coming down the hall. She crossed her arms over herself when he attempted to poke her again. I've got to take off, Till. I'll see. Take me with you! She clutched his shoulder, the brightness gone, and a more desperate gleam in her eyes. I'm going to work, Tilly. Not someplace fun, he told her, even though work could be fun. Besides, he was anxious to see Wally, Landry, and Rose. Maybe even Valerius would show up to tour the plushie section. He smirked at that. 
but quickly reminded himself that Valerius, A, would not come to Wally's again, as that might give Caden's identity away, and B, he didn't want Valerius around anyways. Caden was mad at him. Mate indeed, and not even to put his hat into the ring. I want to go with you, she hugged at his arm. I'll work too. Wally always likes it when I dust. We can tilly. You don't even clean up your own clothes on your floor. But you're offering to dust for Wally? Well, he might give you a few bucks for it, though, if you do a good job, Caden mused, but then shook himself. But that's stupid. I won't be able to hang out with you much, and you won't have a good time. Caden, I don't care. I just want to be with you, she cried. She was suddenly blinking away tears. After yesterday, I just, can't I come with you? Please? Seriously, I won't get in the way. And you don't have to say anything to me. I just want to be with you. And he realized then what the problem was. Yesterday, she'd been on the phone with him just before the bomb had gone off. And he hadn't gotten in contact with her until hours later. So today, she would likely spend the entire day fretting about him, especially as he needed to get a new cell phone at some point to replace the one that had been destroyed, so she wouldn't even be able to talk to him or text with him to make sure he was okay. He raked a hand through his hair. Okay, okay, you can come. I can? Her face was all brightness and joy again. If she realized how much it mattered to him that she was happy, she would have had him wrapped around her finger even more than she did now. But you need to be low-key at the shop. No talking about aisle air when customers are present. And I know, loose lips sink ships. She mimed locking her mouth and throwing away the key. You got it. Now, get on my back and I'll carry you down, he told her. She frowned. Are you sure? I'm pretty heavy now, Caden. Not for me. Not anymore, he clarified. He flexed his arm muscles. Shifter strength. Wow, yeah, she looked thoughtful. So many things are different about you now. Though you seem the same to me. Your personality, I mean. She climbed onto his back, gripping his waist with her legs and his neck with her arms. There's this girl at school who said that her cousin became a werewolf shifter and that his personality totally changed afterwards. That they were glad he left the house. Caden frowned. Are we sure that he changed or just their perception of him did? I, I don't know. I thought she was telling me the truth, but maybe, maybe people were just scared of him. He leaned forward and easily caught the trunk of the tree with his feet and hands. He began to shimmy down to the ground. It was early enough that there weren't a ton of people outside, but there was one. Old Mr. McGruber was out in his brown and white striped bathrobe and slippers, taking out his Pekingese pop-pop to pee. Both he and Pop Pop stared at them climbing out of his bedroom window with roomy, suspicious eyes. Caden smiled and waved as if this was perfectly normal for them to be doing this. Hey, Mr. McGruber, Pop Pop, how goes it? The old man grunted and Pop Pop let out a sharp bark and piddled himself. Gross! Tilly wrinkled her nose as he set her down. I can't believe Pop Pop is still alive. I can't believe Mr. McGruder still is, he snickered. She laughed too, which called Mr. McGruber to turn around to stare even more suspiciously at them. That had them going into gales of laughter. Caden caught Tilly's hand, and the two of them quickly ran down the block before their parents could find them. They were three quarters of the way to Dragon Strike Square when Caden's stomach rumbled. He hadn't gotten anything to eat since the sandwich the night before. He nearly curled over with the sudden painful hunger. Iolair offered the image of them snacking on a big brown cow. Ew, gross, he mimicked Tilly. What's wrong? Tilly stopped in mid-description of some drama at her school when he let out a moan. Starving, he admitted. His head lifted as he realized that they were by a fast food place. Burgers, breakfast sandwiches, fries! He reached for his wallet in his back pocket, except it wasn't there because it had been destroyed and it was somewhere in shreds down at the drop. He let out a wail. No. What, now what's wrong? Tilly asked, glancing between him and the golden arches of the restaurant. No wallet, no money, no food, he moaned. Oh, don't worry about that. I'll pay. I've got a ton of babysitting money. Just wait right here, she told him and ran off into the store. Wait, I haven't told you what I want, he called after her. She looked back at him from the door, grinning from ear to ear. I know what you want. You want everything. Then she disappeared inside. 
Eilair and him commiserated over their empty stomachs, but it didn't last that long as Tilly reappeared with two huge bags of food. He couldn't see her face because it was blocked by the bags. He reached over to her and took one of them from her hands. Let's sit on the bench. We have time, right? She asked, moving a lock of hair off of her sweaty forehead as she gestured towards the empty stone bench against the wall of the restaurant. Oh yeah, plenty of time, he said into the bag of food. He was behaving rather like a horse with a feed bag, stuffing his face into it and inhaling deeply. There were cheeseburgers galore, fries, bagels with eggs and cheese and bacon, hash browns, and who knew what else. Iolair's clawed feet kneaded the ground like a large cat in excitement. Caden unwrapped the first burger and ate it in two bites. He was on his third burger when Tilly giggled. Wow, he asked around a bite of burger that he swallowed. You're welcome. She swung her legs on the bench. He colored, thanks, Tilly. You and your babysitting money are heaven sent. I'll pay you back. She chewed her own breakfast sandwich thoughtfully and then asked, do you think we're going to be rich now? Polishing off another burger and stuffing fries in his mouth at the same time, he was just about to consider squeezing a ketchup packet in his mouth, too, when he gave her a raised eyebrow. Not even he could talk around, not even he could talk around that much food. All shifters are rich, aren't they? She asked. He thought of Rose and her circumstances down in the below. He shook his head as he anaconded the food in his mouth. No, there are poor shifters, but I guess they're clans of money, so... They benefit from that, but I don't have a clan. But I will have a mate if I'm not careful, Caden thought. And what if one of the dragon shifters, or more than one, offer my whole family a life of luxury? Tilly getting to go to the best schools, mom able to afford to go to divinity school to become a preacher of the faith, dad running his own firm. Could I just turn that down? Well, Valerius took you to High Reach, and he wanted you to stay there, she pointed out. So he's like your clan, I guess? And every dragon shifter is way wealthy, like with treasure hordes and stuff. I think if you're a dragon shifter, you have to have a dragon horde, right? Valerius only wanted me in high reach because he thought I could cause him trouble otherwise, he pointed out glumly. Iolair did not react to the idea of money or treasure hordes at all. Instead, it kept indicating he needed to eat that bagel and egg sandwich now. Whatever thought he'd had that dragons loved treasure, it didn't seem to apply to Iolair, at least not when his spirit was focused on food. Maybe treasure was second on the list. I hope you are enjoying Dragon's Reign so far. One of the things I enjoy most about Dragon's Reign is the world building. Creating a complex and full world is fascinating to me. Answering the questions, what if shifters were real and out in the open, and how would the world change and be is like catnip to me. Well, I asked the same sorts of questions when I started the massive vampire serial story, Everdark. In Everdark, an ancient vampire king gets awakened by a bold urban explorer out to prove that vampires exist, along with his skeptical best friend. The two former humans are thrown into a world of vampires that exists right alongside their own, including developing their own vampire powers. A vampire romance with two main couples, many characters, magical powers, and a huge world of vampire culture and mythology awaits. If you sign up for our list, you will get the first 10 chapters of Everdark free. That's over 48,000 words to read. A link is down in the description below. He lets you go. If he just wanted you there for that, he would have put you in the dungeon, Tilly pointed out blithely. Oh, yeah, I guess he would. The dungeon. Caden was certain she was right. He shrugged and grabbed the bagel sandwich. He thought of Valerius flying over their home last night. The Dragon King hadn't just done it once, but circled for ages. Caden thought he'd caught a few blasts of thoughts from him. Of course, what he thought he heard involved something along the lines of dreaded boy and too innocent to live and disorder and chaos and should just pick him up and... He lost track of that last one as he'd quickly turned off his bedroom lights and shut the screen so that Valerius didn't attempt to pluck him up like he had last time from his bedroom, though, though the view had been pretty spectacular when Valerius had flown them up to the top of High Reach. It had actually been nice. Are we going to see Valerius again? I mean, we are, but when? 
I think dad and his firm want us to stay away from him until they have their legal briefs written, he said, and stared down at the sheath of fries moodily for some reason. They think a bunch of papers are going to stop Valerius? Tilly rolled her eyes. That's the smartest thing anyone has ever said about Valerius. He smiled at her. I'm smart. Yeah, you are. They finished the food, or rather Caden finished everything, but one of the fries and an egg sandwich that were Tilly's. He stood up to put the wrappers in the trash and cracked his neck from side to side. You should totally have a food baby after eating all that. Tilly looked skeptically at his totally flat, muscled stomach. Truthfully, I just feel normal. Not like I had a meal right now, but that I ate a few hours ago, he told her. Well, you've got a dragon to feed, I guess, she said. Someone looked over at them curiously and she quickly amended, your imaginary dragon, that is. He gave her a warning look. We shouldn't talk about this stuff out in the open. Yeah, I see what you mean. Let's go to the shop. Those knickknacks won't dust themselves. She grabbed his arm and the two of them resumed chatting about everyday things, avoiding the topic of shifters and dragons or anything at all, talking what they really wanted to talk about. Dragon Strike Square was pretty busy for early morning. Caden guessed that tourists were doing their best to enjoy Reach and look for Valerius flying above one more time since last night's celebration hadn't gone off. He wondered if they would do something today, but many people were likely leaving, their trips ending naturally, or maybe cutting them short for fear of more bombs. The day was beautiful, though, sunny, and the sky a cerulean blue with only a few light fluffy clouds, but no Dragon King. Caden tried to ignore that he felt sad about that. There were a ton more cops in the square, though. Many of them were werewolf shifters and were in their shifted forms, prowling the area, sniffing the air, scowling at everyone. Caden's shoulder blades drew together as he remembered the feeling of being hunted by the claw the day before. There were some of the palace guard around in their red armor as well. No one, though, looked at him and Tilly. He wondered if they had been told who he was and to ignore him thoroughly, or if they really couldn't tell he was the white dragon shifter. Wally was standing in the open doorway to the shop, chatting with Jane Stevens, who owned a bistro two doors down. She had an apron over her black skirt that already showed white handprints on her hips. The bistro baked its own French bread that was incredible. He could totally snack on a loaf with butter and ham and cheese swallowed. He really needed to go get a new license and debit card. Tilly couldn't afford to keep feeding him, even on a ton of babysitting money. But the thought of food was put out of his mind when he heard what they were talking about. Yeah, the claw came here to interview all my staff yesterday. Wanted to know if we saw anything regarding the bomber, Wally said to Jane, before his sharp gaze found Caden and Tilly. Caden realized then that Wally had known they were there the moment they had entered the square. How did I not know he was a shifter before, Caden thought. It's obvious now, even without the eye shine. Wait, are my eyes shining? Will Jane notice? Why hadn't he thought of this? It would be obvious that he was the white dragon shifter. Everyone who saw its eyes would guess. Maybe Wally would have some more of those contacts that would hide the night shine, but that would do no good to him now. So he quickly ducked his head down, but Jane was already calling to him and Tilly. Caden, Tilly! I'm so glad to see that you two weren't too scared to come down here today. It looks pretty busy to me, Tilly gazed around, although there are a lot of police. It's not busy at all for the day after an anniversary. It's practically dead, and the police are making the few customers nervous. She dropped her voice as she added, werewolves are so unpredictable and prone to violence. Wally good-naturedly tissed at her and Caden found it amazing how evenly Wally handled the prejudice about shifters he heard every single day. How did he not blow up at people and tell them to shove it? Why didn't he seem to think badly of Jane and Landry for their beliefs? They've got a tough job keeping people safe, Jane. And after yesterday, it's even tougher, Wally said with a shrug. Considering he was a rat shifter and seemed to have been some kind of criminal before, it was even more amazing how understanding he was of law enforcement. Jane fanned herself with one flower-dredged hand. I suppose you're right, Wally, but a fat lot of good they did yesterday. We could have all been blown to kingdom come if not for the white dragon. She sighed and smiled. Who do you suppose it is? Why would we know? Caden asked, studiously looking at the ground. Because it happened here? She enthused. And we're all here, so it's likely someone we know. 
Caden's shoulders practically drew up to his ears at that. There were a ton of tourists, Jane. It could have been one of them, Tilly pointed out, and Caden's shoulders relaxed. Jane, however, looked crestfallen. You think? I suppose you're right. After all, who among us would be worthy of being a dragon shifter? No one, Tilly said, nodding sagely. You're so right, Tilly, Wally nodded himself. At that moment, Iolair helpfully suggested that they shift in the square so that everyone could see them again. It was clear that they were popular and wanted. Plus, it might make the werewolf shifters less nervous if they were there to protect everyone. Caden sighed. I think less nervous doesn't mean what you think it means, Iolair. Caden teased the spirit gently. Iolair purred at him. Don't you go purring and be cute with me, he told it. We have to talk about this mate business. I'm not happy you didn't mention it before. Iolair blinked and purred at him again. Caden sighed. Either the spirit didn't understand his concerns, which he doubted, or it simply didn't share them, but wasn't going to say that. This was more likely, but also more disturbing, too. What duty did he have to Iolair if the spirit wanted to mate? He nearly groaned out loud. We should, uh, go inside, Caden said weakly, knowing he was risking Jane noticing his eyes any minute now and figuring out the worst kept secret in the world. Tilly, you heard a shopper work, Wally asked, getting that speculative gleam in his eye when he saw a potential worker. Work, Tilly grinned. You want me to dust the knickknacks? Wally tousled her hair. That's my girl. You know where the dust rags are. In the back, second shelf on the left, she told him proudly. Wally chuckled. What a remarkable girl, a wonderful girl. I shouldn't be surprised since your brother and sister. He turned back to Jane. My two best workers. They are the best, Jane agreed generously. If you two stop by later, I have some cinnamon rolls that are coming fresh out of the oven. Caden's stomach audibly growled. I can see that's a yes, Jane giggled. He kept his head firmly down as he blushed. Thanks so much, Jane. We'll definitely be over there. Well, he'd send Tilly over there to get them if Wally didn't have any contacts for him to wear. As he and Tilly headed inside, he heard Jane say to Wally, Someone told me that Valerius wanted your story yesterday. Is that true? It is, Wally answered with a conspiratorial note in his voice. I sort of hinted I had maybe seen something, but needed to go inside to jog my memory. And then I showed him some of the merch. I tried to get him to endorse some of it, but no luck. Not that I'm going to stop trying. You're so incorrigible, Wally, but I love it. If it works out, someday you'll have to get him to endorse my muffins, Jane laughed. Caden shook his head at how effortlessly the lies tripped from Wally's tongue. He wasn't worried about the side of Wally. The store owner had always had a loose relationship with the truth, at least in regards to selling. But instead, Caden was grateful for it. Wally would keep the heat off of him. He let out a sigh as soon as they'd crossed the threshold of the shop and the door shut behind them. Didn't expect to see you in today, dragon boy, Landy drawled from her perch at the register. Hey, Till, how goes it? Tilly answered, great, it's, um, great. Tilly, you should text mom and dad now. Let them know where we are. Caden said, realizing that their parents would totally freak out finding them both gone and no note. She nodded. Now that we got away, you mean? Exactly. She pulled out her phone and started texting as she walked towards the back room, leaving him and Landry alone. Caden stuffed his hands in his pockets and wandered over to her. He was unaccountably nervous, or maybe not unaccountably. Landry had been in his corner, more than that, willing to go to jail yesterday for him even though she knew he was a shifter. But she'd always been clear that her sympathies lay with humans first. Surprised to uh, see you here as well, Landry, after all the excitement, he clarified quickly. I figured you'd demand battle pay from Wally before you'd come back in. She smiled behind her bangs. Yeah, I considered it, but it was hard after... Uh, She bit her lower lip. Wally told me everything last night, about himself, I mean. That he's a rat shifter and was a big-time gangster. Caden leaned against the glass-fronted case. You know more about him than I do, then. She shrugged and traced a figure eight on the glass top of the case. Yeah, well, he wanted me to know everything quickly so I could make a decision. And you're here, so you have made a decision? She bit her lower lip again. Wally and you, she sighed. You're not like what I've been taught shifters are supposed to be. 
So it's sort of hard and stupid and hypocritical to hate shifters when two of them are your good friends. Caden grinned. You've always been a very logical person, Landry. She shrugged. Not really. If I had been, I would have actually waited to meet some shifters instead of going by what my brothers said about them. You love Ross and Harvey, he said her older brother's names. It would be hard to dismiss what they were saying before when you had nothing to compare it to. But that didn't seem to make her feel better. Instead, she looked almost like she was going to cry, and Landry never cried. Yeah, well, maybe I should have gotten some facts myself to tell them, because now... Now I think it might be too late. Caden frowned. Landry, what do you mean by too late? A fat tear crawled down her cheek. Caden, last night I overheard them talking and... And I think they may have had something to do with that bomb. I hope you enjoyed this week's chapter. If you want to read ahead in Dragon's Reign or read the many other stories hosted there, you can purchase a membership to get access to wraithrain.com. Or you can continue to listen along here for free. If you'd like to learn more about wraithrain.com and me, there's a link in the description down below. 